Welcome everybody. Let me pray and then we'll get started. Abina Makena, here we are, Abba, gathered in your name once again. And we just we just ask that you join us today in your Ruach Kakodesh, that you would keep us safe, um, that you would lead us the way you would have us to go. And we ask that you reveal yourself in a mighty way in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. All right. Is Paula here? No. She's not. Wow. So uh, the report is, from what I hear, just a few shingles lost on Paula's house. That was directly hit, guys. This is amazing because this was right in the heart of um, the destruction. I mean, there was people that lost everything. Some even lost their lives in Paula's house. A couple of shingles. That was it. Amen. That was it. In power and prayer. Yeah, and, and see that? And she's just, you know, within the intercoastal waterway. And if you know anything about that, that all floods. When the surge comes in, uh, J7409, who has a, a YouTube channel on weather and stuff, lives in Newburn on the water. She was about 12 feet underwater. And she was live streaming it on her phone when all this was happening, the first surge. So it was bad, very bad. Yeah, me and the wife been praying every day for her house. Man, you know. That shows the power of prayer in the right name, doesn't it? That's right. I'm telling you what now. Same thing happened here in this lava flowing. Everybody calling on Pele. And all of those that call on Pele lost their, their houses. Jason, we start calling on Yahua. And... Was saved. The only place you telling me this the only place out of all the flows that stops <laughs> at the moment of prayer it stops. That's not an accident, guys. That's, that is not an accident. That's a godsend. That's right. And so, all every one of those lobes that came from Fisher Eight eventually flowed to the ocean and continued to flow with a mighty river. That one lobe, the northern lobe that came toward Jason, was the only one that stopped. Um, and, it, and it went down inside of a crack and diverted from his house. You know, um, coincidence, you know, you can, you can spin that all the way you want, but we'll walk around knowing, standing on that we called on our father, and he responded just like the word says. Just like Jeremiah 33, 3, call upon me, and I, I will show you inaccessible things. That's right. That's exactly okay. right. Can, can I show you something? Yeah. Uh, where, where is it? Uh, is it appropriate? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, no, I don't think I can. Uh, I thought Once I could see. I was, I, we were, we were just, you know, and I was watching the news, and I'm thinking, no, I can. I'm thinking it's just going to be something, Father. If you pull her out of this, ah, there's going to be something, <laughs> and it, and it happens. So I'm so happy for her. Are you ready, Jer uh, Harold? You got it? Uh, no, I can't share my my um, my camera, but I think me, me and Riku already have Yom Kippur. It's dark there, yes. Yeah. Yeah. We can see out the window behind Riku, it's dark. Yes. Yeah. It's almost midnight. Yes. Almost. Very good. It's uh, 10 here. 10, 10. 10 here. And so you're, you're exactly 12 hours um, where you are from here. It's me? Yeah, where you are. 10, 10. It's 10, 10 here, a.m. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, so it's, yeah. So is anybody working on codes? No, he hasn't given me a, a ELS yet. Mm -hmm. What about Ann? Ann, you got anything? Actually, I do. Awesome. I got three in front of me, that, or two in front of me that was working for a few days. Any headphones? I do. Let's keep these off on the bed here. Okay, we didn't need it into the bed. Okay. 
Sorry, I just have to get the file open. I didn't. No worries. Didn't have it prepared here. <coughs> no, but I didn't. Rick, could you see my our messages to you on our own hip chat, Darla and I? Sure. Thanks. Yeah. Great okay. to have uh, some uh, uh, thoughts from your side as well. I, I want you to really consider that. Um, don't worry about uh, what what kind of cost and stuff, but I think it would sure. be really sure. good. We'll see how it evolves. Maybe. All right. Is it showing up? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. All right. Ready. Purdy. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, so with the feast being on, this is a, a good time to show this table. So this one is found in Genesis, um, where Yahuwah is creating everything. And um, the, the key word is Hamoadim, which starts with the red going up. So the feasts or the festivals or the appointed times. And it's also um, in the plain text here in the red, it's Moedim. And I'll read you what this highlighted verse is um, in the English. It says, And Elohim said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. So that word seasons is the Moedim. I'm just going to close this door, put the air conditioner on. <laughs> okay, um, so I thought it was cool that it was in uh, an access term and also in the plain text. Yeah, um, and it like this. And I focus, sorry? I like the way it comes together, the 90 degree angle that they uh I mean, that's not an accident that those two words come together. <laughs> I mean, because you think about it, we have 30,000 verses in the scripture. Um, you know, just the fact that those words come together in itself, only just that anomaly alone is a, an amazing knowledge. Yeah. But then when every, all of the other words appear, especially vertical, that's even more. It compounds. It'd be cool to know the exact odds, <clears throat> but it is pretty slim. <laughs> wow. Pretty slim, Jim. You've got Bereshit Barayel Et Hashemayim, where you got the Shemayim there. You also have a word going down vertical there in that burgundy that's connected to two Elohims. What is that word? Okay, okay, where are you at? That. Uh, um, you, you meant fat boy slim. No, just, just. I'm sorry, man. I was just I was <laughs> on the conjunctions, and I'll let you finish it, then I'll ask you that afterwards. Okay. Yeah, be sure to do that. Okay, so um, what with this table, what I gravitated to was uh, the moon, which is the lesser light. The, the sun is the greater light. So in the plain text as well, these yellow uh, words here is uh, the light or the, the luminary, or luminary, okay? So that's this one here. It's there twice. And then this orange over here is little or lesser. So it goes with this luminary here, the lesser luminary. And that is the moon. So we believe in the lunar calendar. And the moon is in this table starting, uh, well, that's the end of it. And it goes up diagonal and crosses over Moedim. So it starts here. Ha. Yeruch, how do you say that? I don't know. So that's neat that the moon crosses over Mo Ha Moedim. Um, now let's see. Also, we have lunar in here which starts with this uh oh this other yod <laughs> yod here and then uh, goes across to the right um another couple of words to do with uh lighting like light 
you know, Yahuwah is light. In him is no darkness at all. So <clears throat> he uses light to speak to us. So we have illumination uh, in the orange here. And let's see. Yeah, it goes down. Hara, illumination. And also menorah is in this table. What color? Okay, it's going in this very light teal, crossing over that Bible verse um, I read you earlier, menorah going down. So that gives light in the temple and in the, um, the Mishkan. So some other words. Okay, all of, um, all of the directions and all the Torah was given in the desert. And with the, with the yod on the end, it means um, like desert-like, you know, so a desert area, like an adjective. So we have desert and desert-like. Um, Medibar, going, skipping down here in the brownish color. And the Torah was given in, in the desert. And Torah is in um, the black. Let's see, Torah. Wait, <laughs> what is that color? Torah. Looks like black. Is it? Well then. Okay, we'll just. Wait, does anybody see it? Torah? Is it white? Oh, it's in the white with the black. That's what I did. See, I don't even know my own system. Okay, so Torah going down uh, vertical. Then teaching is here three times with, uh, okay, I don't have it written down here, but what it's crossing over, but it's the same words that it's crossing over. Um, see here in this uh, light or medium blue going across this way is teaching. And it's also down here and near the bottom. So if you if you compare the letters there, yeah, I, uh, sorry, I don't have it on hand, but what the, the phrase is that it's crossing over, it's interesting because, you know, Torah means instruction and teaching, and there it is three times. Um, we also have uh, Ark, like for the Ark of the Covenant, here in the green on the right-hand side, Arun, going up. Uh, Merari is the name of the um, the sons of the descendants of Aaron that looked after part of the temple. They're going the same access term. I forget what they looked after, if it was the uh, curtains around it or something. They didn't look after the uh, the articles like the um, like the Ark of the Covenant and that. It, they did something else. Um, Merari. And then we have the uh, Shabbat is in the green here, Ha Shabbat. And daily is in this pink, uh, Yom, Yomim. Uh, hyssop is a, um, something to do with cleansing. They would put the blood on the hyssop that's in the green here. Same skip as the access term four letters, and it's touching uh, that sentence too, talking about the, the lights being created. Um, we also have mikvah, and it shares the mem from uh, the moedim. So mikvah is for purification as, as well. Like that's what the hyssop is for too, like purification um, and cleansing. And mikvah was for that. And circumcision, we have it in the, the purple here. Same skip as the access term. And we also have circumcised the same skip uh, in this. It's like a plum color there. So that's, that's cool that circumcision and circumcised. They're the signs of the covenant, and so is the Sabbath, the Shabbat. Um, what else? We have Yeshua. 
And he is, let's see. Now there's Yehoshua. Well, here's Yeshua crossing Hamoadim. And we have Yehoshua crossing this Moadim. So I thought that he's crossing both of the feasts. Huh. And uh, Yehua is in, is in the black here. So and much. share, sorry? I was just going to say, I would think that would be that he's connected to this, to this Moedim, So I do believe it. Yeah. Preach into the choir, brother. <laughs> <laughs> so the Yod um, shares in Yahuwah going across this way, and Yahuwah crosses Yahushua. Yeah, uh, the, this one. And... We're getting there. Just a few more words. We have um, faith, a moon in the teal. Let's see, going down diagonally, and it goes into the, uh, it touches that sentence that I highlighted too. Convert is in, so faith and convert goes together. Um, ma, ma moon, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Um, two times we have angels in the plural, Malachim, going here and then uh, across horizontal here. And then I really like this part. We have hidden and concealed is in this, let's see, this um, mauve color. And it's touching the sentence as well. Uh, sorry, it starts with the, uh, it's olam, I guess. And it can mean hidden or concealed. And that makes me think of the, um, well, it uh, makes me think of a couple of things. Is, you know, the I think it's the Feast of um, Tabernacles where you, you have to sight the moon for it to start. So it's a secret. When is that actually, or it's a Feast of Trumpets. Um, so there, and then, also hidden are the codes. Look at there, guys. Codes is in here. And it's sharing the kuf from uh, mikvah, codeine. So the hidden codes. Look at that. <laughs> um, and then two more words. We have prophetic, nabia, And Yeshua is, you know, prophesied all through the feasts and um, symbolized all throughout that and he's the fulfillment of them so prophetic and then the last word is restoration and that's in the peach same skip as the access term and that's what we're going through right now restoration of his name his feast his language and that's the table thank you hey, for listening hey, sister Anne. Uh -huh. you've seen something really cool like um and the vav in your axis, uh, from the bottom, you have the hey, mem, vav for a hamodim at that right. vav. Right. Uh, you have bikur, yom, shalishi. Uh, and it shares the vav there with Yahusha. Oh, and that with would, Yahusha? What would that be, Jonathan? The bikur is the first fruits, and then you have third bikur. day. So he rose on the third day. Oh, wow. <laughs> and that's running right by your axis, and it shares the Vav and Yahusha. That's really, this is a really amazing. The third example. day. Wow, we. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, sense. I can't highlight on here. This is a paint, but I'm going to write this down. That's, yes, right in that line. At a Very skip nice. Of, huh. at a skip Good of eye, 70. buddy. This amazing table, skip of 70. Oh, yeah. Skip of 70. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Why, why do they always use this um, dot or a, like a star where it's Elohim? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah all, for all Elohim. Over. That's a lame it's, it's all yeah. over. Yeah, they mess up Yahuwah and Elohim. Oh, okay. I didn't yeah. know it was Elohim also. Yeah, it's surprising, isn't it? I didn't think that was a big secret. But, no. Yeah, it's all throughout. It's, it's okay. All, Jonathan, all, all, do, you, do you remember what you were going to ask? I was or comment? That, um, uh, 
uh, that word that is coming down, and I think it's uh, it's not circumcised. It is circumc it's circumcision. So um, at, at the top where it says Bereshit bara el kain el kain et hashemayim, where the where the heavens are, you got circumcised, and then mm. uh, and that runs through two el kings. Um, so I was just kind of looking at the conjunction of those and just kind of. Yeah, it does. And then another one. Any kind of uh, anomaly there. Um, uh -huh. Just just kind of stood out. And it means anything. Um, yeah, they almost line up, huh? Very good. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'll close it out. Hey, if there's some... yep, so. um, I've got uh, for circumcised the spelling. Got some feedback here. I've got for circumcised the spelling memoir Lamed. Is that is it supposed to be hey memoir Lamed, like the circumcised, or is I didn't I didn't actually look up that particular spelling, but this is the word four one three five for circumcised. And Spell it. Spell memoir, memoir Lamed. Moel Lamed. Or Mool rather. Mool uh Moel, I think, is what they call the the person that does circumcisions in 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 the Jewish circles uh, if I'm saying that right and for circumcision it had mem wa lamed he I'm sure that's the variation there um, what I thought was interesting I looked up I looked this up in in Genesis 17 uh, verses 10 and 11 and 11 has um, uh, a word uh, with a wa as a prefix, and then nun mem lamed ta, and I think it was a hey at the end or an olive. Um, but the root word there is namal, nun mem lamed, and I, I looked at those letters, those obviously like center letters, a nun, a mem, and a lamed, um, to mean circumcise. Okay. Um, and then uh, Jonathan and I have been talking about this word cassette in, in – uh, recently and and also in video form um it's the word in psalm 81 3 that means concealed not that that word doesn't also mean concealed but this one specifically has to do with new moon day so it might be something to look up and see if it is there and i would assume it is kafsamic hay is the word psalm 81 3 yeah kafsamic hay kafsamic hay yeah Okay. And then also you were saying that um, the word codes and mikwa uh, using the same kuf, and obviously they both have a kuf and a wa. So I looked up kuf and wa, and it's 6957. It says chord as connecting, and it also says within the definition a musical string or a chord. I thought that was interesting because those two letters are both in the mikwa, the washing, and also in the word um, codes. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. That awesome table. Well, thank you. Yeah, that reminds me of the, that assignment you gave us a long time ago to look up the two letters together and see what, uh, what they meant. That was a good training exercise. Yeah, I, I'm actually studying... Um, Isaiah with a, I've been sharing this link with you guys. Um, it, it is a man that it was a Jewish rabbi and then he converted to Mormonism and they asked him to, I believe they asked him to write this, this translation of Isaiah and a commentary on it. And then they didn't like what the commentary showed because it was against their, their doctrine. And so then they excommunicated him. And then I think they eventually let him back in, but I'm, I'm listening to this commentary and reading his interpretation of it. And he talks about taking, like, for instance, the word judge in, um, in Isaiah 2, because I'm only up to 2. It takes a while to get through a chapter. Um, and he talks about how it's a, it's a word link through the whole book. You can look up the other places in Isaiah just as a technique of this word, for instance, of judge. And you will find out in Isaiah, as far as Isaiah writing the book, that the judge is Yahuwah and the judge is also his servant. So he uses word links through that, whatever the word is, judge or any other word, um, to, he looks for um, definitions or, 
further clarification and revelation on what each of the words is, whether it is a sea or a mountain or the remnant. And it's just an interesting way that he shows how to study the word. Um, I've shared that in um, hip chat with you guys, so you can check it out if you want. So much to learn. Thanks for all that, Darla. You're welcome. Yeah, it's really exciting. Amen. Jump on it when you talk to catch it from the echo. Anybody else got a got a code? You working on Scott? You working on anything? Yeah, I'm working on a couple of things, but I've got one pulled up now. Uh, guys, I uh, okay. <laughs> so I'm really hung up on this verse here in Hosea. So I took the two, the first two words. After two days, he shall make us alive. He sh after two days, he shall he will revive us. So I took the first two words and I put it, used it as an axis. Right. And it's right here in the middle in the red. Um, I don't know, let's see if I can, I don't know. It's kind of, is it hard, for, is it hard to see? Well, I mean, it's small, but we can see what those letters are. I uh, okay. I, for some reason, I like to zoom it out because it gives you more field. Um, so it would be starting from the bottom, or starting from the top, sorry. This is Genesis to Deuteronomy, so you were, you were, you were Torah right here. Right in the Torah. Yeah, and uh, well, let me get my notes out here. Um, what's even, what's cool is, uh, where this is here um, is in Leviticus 7.18. It's talking about meat offerings, uh, clean and unclean meat offerings. But you have this phrase here where you have this word shal shalub encoded in the third day. Um, what's cool is preceding that, you have this other word that I've been finding in, in other codes, hey, zadi, yod, lamed, hetzel. He rescued. So you have that in the same line right here. Um, going through the axis term. It's relevant to what it says in Hosea. Um, over here you have, okay, this word here in the pink starting at the kuf, kuf, wav, mem, yod, here in this word kodashim. Uh, this word kuf wav mem yod kumi means to arise or you arise or get you up or get up. I found this word because I was looking for the word resurrection. Um, obviously, that word doesn't come up in the Tanakh, um, but I translated it and it's and it's tau kuf wav mem hey. Now, this is the the root word of that word. So to arise, resurrection, it's the same idea. So over Scott, here, yes. That is the word that uh, Peter used to rise Dorcas when she died and Yehushua wow. to rise people that had died. Wow, that's cool. Because um, over here you have the same thing or, um, horizontally, kuf, Wav, Mem, Yod, and the Yod is where it says in the sight of Yahuwah. Um, over here where it shares the word, uh, the Yod in Kodeshim, it shares the Yod with Mashiach running here, starting at the Mem, Shin, Yod, Chet, running up like that. And it all converges right there on that Yod. Um, this row of plain text right here is number 625. 
um, the Aaron, the uh, Aaronic blessing, uh, let his face shine upon, let the face of Yahuwah shine upon you. May his face shine upon you. May he be gracious unto you. Right here. And it shares the noon with starting down here at this mem from Zion. So you have from Zion, may his face shine upon you. May he be gracious unto you. And that all runs into right here where the Kodashim is. But what's cool is before the Kodashim is, you have Kodesh again right here. So that would be Holy of Holies, wouldn't it? Kodesh, Kodashim? That's correct, yes. But Kodashim by itself means the Holy Ones, right? The set-apart ones. It gets, it's a versatile use. I mean, it, it's... but It's a little ambiguous. You're right. Yeah, yeah. But it's the same thing. Right. They're um, both great. <laughs> Right. Here, here you have uh, Ben-Adam, son of man. Um, and another thing, <laughs> Mark, it was you have Tishri running perfectly with no spaces right here, sharing the Yod again. So you've got all these four words converging on that Yod. Yeah. Um, and... When I plugged in this axis term, I, I forget how many times it came up. It wasn't very many, but it was the first one I pulled up and I just started going with it. And um, there's a bunch. You cut out, Scott. Scott, you're still talking. You're muted, Scott. Yeah, we we can't hear you. I don't know what. Here, let's undo that. I don't know what's happening with it. It's muted now, right? Yeah, he shouldn't be muted, but. Uh, I think he was there toward the end. Michael, you working on anything? Yeah, I'm working on my module 15 still. I'm getting ready to take the test probably tomorrow. Very good. Everything going okay? Oh, it's going wonderful. I'm learning, I'm learning a lot. Thank you. Very good. Appreciate you guys supporting um, the the chat room whenever I do a live stream. To see you guys over there, it's a good deal. Yeah, I try to make everyone you go on. So I missed last night. My daughter showed up. I didn't get the notification until this morning. <laughs> yeah. Gerald, how's things going? Oh, I'm going along at my snail's pace as usual. It's all right. If you're, take your time. Darla, you got anything you want to share? Um, I don't have any, uh, I guess I can show you just a. I did want to mention that. Um, Oh right, I don't have a mic on this, um, on this, on these earbuds. Uh, I wanted to share that Zion or Zion is one of the words that um, this former rabbi um, says is in, is encoded in Isaiah that it is the remnant. So that should add some uh, depth and testimony to Scott's table. Zion is the remnant. It's um, it's not just all of Israel. Um, those born, but those that are the Kodesh ones, the Kodeshim. Jonathan, that's it. That's all I had to share. I think Jonathan stepped away for a second. Um, if you guys can hear me, it looks like my mic button is going up and down. Um, I've just been sharing 
with people, um, obviously with Facebook and on YouTube in the in the comments. Um, it's just a time when people uh, this time of the year is a time when Christians are looking for the rapture. Their their curiosity is up. They're they're open to receiving some information on the calendar and. I've just been trying to enlighten and share truth as much as I can, wherever I can. And um, the father's just given us favor. He's given us the ability to, to um, share truth with people and they're open, they're receiving. So it's, it's really wonderful. I've just been very busy trying to just help people wake up to Yahuwah's um, calendar his name, all the things he's restoring. And um, for anybody on Facebook, you guys can check out my notes anytime. You can share my notes. They're public. Uh, I'm doing my best to get them over to the website, but it's just a matter of there's only one of me to do all that. So it takes time. But anyway, I'm thankful the Father gives us that opportunity to speak into people's lives and try to wake them up more and more. Um, the dark days are getting very dark, and Yahuwah is re restoring and repairing and bringing together um, his people. And um, it's, it's awesome what Yahuwah is doing in the world, and he's waking people up. And I think there's, we're going to see more of the devastations as he continues to wake people up. Um, so stay strong because um, the days ahead are going to be very exciting. And uh, I, I pray Yahuwah will, um, will strengthen you guys and um, bless you for your time keeping Yom Kippur. Um, we've, had, we've had some movement even with our 23-year-old um, our son, and I've challenged him to stay the course. He's getting ready to start a, a business um, selling pizza. That happens on Wednesday nights here um, that he has an opportunity to sell those things. So I have... I have encouraged him and challenged him to stay the course and wait on you and wait until Yom Kippur is over. Um, so he's, he seems to be, he seems to be uh, willing to toe that line. So we're, we're thankful we're seeing some movement in our son for sure. And um, for, for everybody that is, is seeking to serve you, um, you Barak, you guys. Hallelujah. Rico, you working on anything, brother? <clears throat> yes, bits and pieces. Bits and pieces. But to be honest, I, I haven't now in past week, I haven't entirely put anything new. Only looking for those old, old ones. There are some additions. Uh, yeah, but. I got uh, one more. About I'll, I'll pull it up and show you. Guys, uh, <clears throat> this is Jacob's trouble, and this is based off of you know recent teachings. You just happened to remember having this. Um, some of the initial words that I found in here is um, Gentiles in the plain text. It's also an uh, ELS here. Time of distress, which is Etzora. Ephraim is in here three times. Yom uh, Where is that? Jeremiah. That's in Jeremiah right there. And, um, I think that is all the ELS so far. This was really cool that I, I saw this right off the bat. So you got um, the trouble of Jacob. So you got Jacob here, but then you got the children of Jacob. So it shows that cough. You see that? That's kind of, kind of, kind of the same thing that there's those words that come together in a, like, almost like search right here. So, Let's look at some of the verses <clears throat> where it is. Well, I didn't even see that one yet. Let's look at that. 
So that's a 51st of Jeremiah. I don't have enough room. All right. 51.5. Man, everything is just funny. For Israel hath not been forsaken, nor Judah of his Elohim, of, uh, of Zavaot. Of, how would you say that? The Adonai of hosts. The Adonai of Zavaot. Yahuwah of the Lord of hosts is what it's got there. So it would be uh, Yahuwah of the Adonai of Zavaot. The Lord of Hosts. Anyway, through their land was filled with though their land was filled with sin against the Holy One of Israel. Now we know that Jacob is in the nations, right? Uh, from from what is told to Abraham that his seed would be like the stars; you'd make him father of many nations. He told the same thing to Isaac and the same thing to Jacob. So Jacob is in these nations. To get Jacob to return, he has to do something. It's called the distress of the naked, the naked, the distress of the nations, or Jacob's trouble. You see how that those are the same thing. The distress of the nations and Jacob's trouble is the same thing, right? It's not two separate events. Because Jacob is in the nations, and the, and the way to get him to come out is to distress. And the scriptures are very clear that he says, everywhere that I sent you, everywhere that I scattered you, I'm going to destroy those nations. All right, so uh, Zechariah is the next one there I got highlighted. 9.14. And, and these are end time verses too. <clears throat> now, in Jacob's trouble, we're also looking for what? The second coming, right? Because he comes back and saves Israel from, from um, Satan's wrath. But look what happens here in, in Zechariah here. As for thee also, thy blood of thy covenant, I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit where there is no water. Turn ye to the, to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. Even to the de, de day do I declare, I will render double to thee. When I have bent Judah for me, filled the bow of Ephraim, and raised up thy sons, O Zion, against thy sons, O Greece, and made thee as a sword of a mighty man. And... The Adonai shall be seen over them, like over their head. And his arrow shall go forth as lightning, and Yahuwah Elohim shall blow the what? <laughs> the trumpet. Can you see how can you see that? Jacob's trouble, the stress of nations, Ephraim's in there, the Gentiles down there also. Um we're talking about the same thing. And what do we have? We have, he's seen over their head. There's a sound of a trumpet. This is when the, scroll, the sky rolls back like a scroll. There's nothing secret about it either. Everybody will see it. Everybody will know. You as of oak shall defend them. And he shall devour and subdue with sling stones, and they shall drink and make noise as as though wine, and they shall be filled like bowls as the corners of the altar. And you who Elohim shall save them, in a day as a flock of his people, for they shall be as the stones of a crown, lifted up an ensign on his hand. What do you say about those who study 
on his name, just incidentally. That just popped into my head from Malachi. He says, I will make them my jewels, my diadem, right? Here's, here's another verse. For they shall be as stones of a crown, lifted up as an ensign upon his land. For how great is his goodness and how great is his beauty. And then we're in, wow, look, Malachi. Where are we at here? Malachi 3. What? The synchronicity is insane. All right, so look at this. For behold, the day cometh, and it shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, all the ones who do wickedly, shall be stubble. Why? Because the tares are destroyed when he comes back. He comes, those are the ones that plucked out. And the day cometh, shall burn them up, saith Yehuah Zavah, and it shall leave them neither root nor branch, but unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall you know what a calf of the stall is first of all calf this is a cattle <clears throat> that's kept in a stall This is a cow that's closely taken care of. Sort of like what Darla and I have with our cows that are, that are pinned up in a, what's called a paddock, which is a little bit bigger stall <clears throat> where we are very hands-on with our cattle. Darla is out there picking flies off the cattle so that they're not suffering because of the flies, guys. These are pampered cattle. And he's telling you, Ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of a stall. This is his chosen ones. And ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be up ashes under the soles of your feet. You know why that is? Because when he destroys the wicked, the ashes of them will literally cover the ground. And you will be walking around on the, 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 the verse is absolutely fulfilled in the natural occurrence of that destruction, the ashes fall into the ground. Here it says, and you shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be the ashes under the soles of your feet. In the day that I shall do this, in the very same day that I do this, you'll be treading on them. It's, in, it's incredible. I mean, we're, we're speaking end time verses here. Let's just jump down here to Psalms where... Uh, it just mentions Jacob in, in the 77th chapter of Psalms. We could absolutely go verse to verse, 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 all the way down, and it would it would tell a, a story. So I'm just kind of jumping around not to hold you guys up um, too long on this. 77, 16. In the wrong one. Thou hast, all right, backing up. So, it's uh, starting right there. <clears throat> thou art the Elohim that does wonders, and thou hast declared thy streak among the people, and thou hast, uh, excuse me, thou hast with thine arm redeemed thy people. Now, when he comes back, what's he doing? <laughs> he's, he's, he's redeeming us, right? He's, he's from the destruction of Satan. Because bef before his wrath, Satan's wrath is, on, is going on the earth. And he is persecuting you. <clears throat> Thou hast with thine arm redeemed thy people, the sons of Jacob and Joseph. Stressing Ephraim, right? The water saw thee, O Elohim, the water saw thee, and they were afraid. The depths were also troubled. And just down at 19, look, the voice of thy thunder was in the heaven, and the lightnings lightning in, uh, in the world, and the world, and the earth trembled and shook. 
This is a great and terrible day. <laughs> right under that is also a Psalm 105. None. Which made, uh, excuse me, back up to eight. He hath remembered his covenant forever, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations. And confirm, excuse me, with the covenant he made with Abraham and his oath to Isaac. And confirming the same to, to Jacob for a law and to Israel for an everlasting covenant. <laughs> so these are promises. In Jacob's trouble, we are reminded these promises are firm all through the scriptures. Uh, here's another Psalm. It's 118. And, and uh, we'll read starting at 26. Uh, Blessed be he that cometh in what? The name of Yahuwah. For we have blessed you out of the house of Yahuwah. Yahuwah is the Elohim, which has shown us light, buying the sacrifice with cords, even unto the horns of the altar. Thou art my Elohim, and I will praise thee. Thou art my Elohim, I will exalt thee. Yes. And, uh, oh, that's both of those. So, you know, just a, just a couple of search terms so far. The meat and potatoes were really right there in the, in the, the verses that run through. So there's still a lot to, to pull as far as ELS terms out of this. Um, but just another example of how you can use uh, an access term that comes out of, you know, something from Scripture, something that prophet said, something Yeshua said, um, something that Paul said, any of that you know, or could, could be viable search terms that hold more information. Hey, Jonathan. Yeah. I think it was the first or the second verse that you read from the plain text talked about rendering double. Right. What was the context of that one again? The, Are you uh, able to read that one again? The purple one? Hold on a second. Oh. Maybe it was, it was, I think it was the first one you read and it made me think of another verse and I wanted to know if um, the double was this in the same context as that. Oh my it was God. rendering double. You who was going to render double to I Israel? Think it was Jeremiah 51. But yeah, that sounds familiar. Yeah, so that yeah, was, that's, that's up said. here in, um, in the day of Yahuwah. So let's go there and read in that area. My, um, See where it says day of Yahuwah, Yom Yahuwah, it's spliced from two different words. That's really cool. You're, you're absolutely right. Um, wow. Well, it's an abacus effect. You, you yeah. guys see that? Yes. Yes, yes. Yeah, I didn't know that at the time because I just typed wow. in Yom Yahuwah and it come up. So that is in his name, inside of his name, which is, um, uh, it says, uh, Israel and Judah, Elo, uh, Elohai, and Yahuwah Zavod. Uh, so it is definitely a... Um, And Abacus. And so where are we at? Five. Thus the slain shall be shall fall in the land of the Chaldeans, and they that are thrust through in her streets. For Israel hath not been forsaken, nor Judah of his Elohim. And in that is where it is the day of Yahuwah, the, the great and terrible day is mentioned several times. And here, here's the thing. All of those pastors are teaching about rapture. They seem to just completely ignore this day. It's clear in, in scriptures. This takes precedence over there's 
This is the, the second coming. When he comes back, it is the great and terrible day. Why is it both? Great and terrible. Well, <laughs> because he's coming after us and he's destroying the wicked. Flee out of the midst of Babylon. Excuse me. For Israel hath not been taken, nor Judah of his Elohim, who was of oak, through their land was filled, though their land was filled with sin, against the Holy One of Israel. <clears throat> Flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul. <clears throat> Be not cut off in her iniquity, for this is the time of Yahuwah's vengeance. He will render unto her a recompense. Babylon has a, been a golden cup in Yahuwah's hand and had made all the earth drunk and the nations have drunken of her wine. Therefore, the nations are mad. This is the woman that rides the beast, guys, with the cup in her hand. And what does it say? She gives this cup and, and the nations are drunk. They're mad. So, uh, yeah, a lot of hidden right there in this Jacob's trouble table. In time verse from Jeremiah, Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. How for her take balm for her pain. If so, she may be healed. We have, uh, we would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed Forsake her, And let us go everyone into his own country. This is the great exodus <clears throat> out of the, out of Babylon, i.e. America. If you want to look at that way, um, all the, all the indicators are pointing to war. I don't know if you picked up on what just happened yesterday or last night in the middle of the night for us. Um, Israel was blamed for shooting down a Russian plane. Um, and uh, th this Russian general got on RT and was, I mean, like a banty rooster going off on, on Israel's. And this was like an act of war. So, and, and it's all about Syria. You know, they had these planes going into Syria and all of a sudden uh, some kind of radar system was jammed by Israel and caused a missile system in Syria to shoot down its own plane or something like that. That's the scenario, but they're blaming Israel for it. It's, this is heating up in that region to do exactly what the scripture says is going to happen. And, you know, we're not going to be isolated in our own section of the world. And, and you know, and our economy is going to be, you know, in America, seven times greater and all that. We're going to be caught up in that too. Right. And in the middle of a time where this country is divided politically, and you've got Democrats who want, to see the president, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to say it out loud, but you know what I'm talking about. It's happened before. There, there are those that are in there that are, that are, would willingly look the other way if something dubious happened to the president. They hate him that much, right? So, so the conditions are ripe for an internal coup very similar to what happened in the 1960s in Dallas. You know what I'm telling you? I'm not predicting something. I'm just saying, guys, from, from years of looking at this analytically, I see a pattern, I, and that's something you will gives me a gift to see patterns. And I can see patterns in that and direct parallels um, that tell me there's a high probability we're going to see something very terrible happen to this president. I hope that is not the case. I, I would love to be wrong, but it's, you know, in my judgment, um, it, it's, it's one of those things you'll have to watch and, and know exactly what it means in hindsight. It, you know, it's not something I can get out and just be very public and say, Hey guys are going to try to kill the president. Right. Cause then they'll come after me and want to put me in a hospital or something um, or in jail. Anyway, I know that the, the prophetic narrative of our scriptures has a, a, a timeline and a story and an end game to it. And, and it culminates with the second coming of our Messiah coming to destroy the, the, the enemies of the world, of, of the kingdom. 
and uh, you know, so good pickup there, uh, Scott, on that abacus. I wasn't aware that it was an abacus um, because I just typed in Yom Yuhua and, and it popped up. Um, but that's kind of cool. So yeah, there's still a lot there. Okay, I think the verse that it might have been the Zechariah 9 one. This one here? Where it talked about, I will restore double. Is that speaking to Israel? Zechariah 9.12. Let's get context of what's going on in that. The burden of, of the word of Yahuwah in the land of Hadrach and Damascus. Look at where we're at right now. <laughs> Syria. When the eyes of man, as of all the tribes of Israel, shall be toward Yahuwah, and Hamath shall be shall border thereby, Tyrus and Zidion, though it be very wise. And Tyrus did build herself a stronghold, and heaped up silver and dust and fine gold in the mire of the streets. Behold, Yahuwah will cast her out and will smite her power in the sea, and she shall be devoured with, with fire. So it's a battle in the Mediterranean. Ashkelon shall, shall see it in fear. Gaza shall see it and be sorrowful. And Ekron for expectation shall be ashamed, and the king shall perish from Gaza, and Ashkelon shall not be inhabited. And a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod, and I will cut off the pride of the Philistines, and I will take away his blood out of his mouth and his abominations between his teeth, that he that remaineth. Even he shall be for our Elohim, and he shall be as a governor in Judah, and Ekron as a Jebusite. And I will encamp around mine house because of the army because of him that passed by and because of him that returneth and no oppressor shall pass through them anymore for now have I seen with mine eyes rejoice greatly O daughter of Zion shout O daughter of Jerusalem behold thy king cometh unto thee hello he is just and having salvation lowly riding upon an ass, and a colt, the foal of an ass. Now, Yeshua actually fulfilled that verse when he come riding into, um, into the city on a, on a donkey, and they were laying down palm branches. But in the context of this, <laughs> of this table, we'll also, it's also connected to his second coming here in this table. As for thee, thy blood of thy covenant, I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit where there was no water. Turn you to a stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. Even to, even to, even today, I do I declare that I will render double unto thee. So there's what you're talking about. Turn you to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. Even today, do I declare that I render double unto thee. Now, who is thee? The prisoners of hope. I love that term. Yeah, the ver the verse that it paralleled with was um, that I thought the candle I mind when you were reading was from um, Isaiah four. Can I read just a little titch of it? Um, it starts out Isaiah forty. Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people, saith your Elohim. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her that. Her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned. For she hath received of Yahuwah's hand double for all her sins. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of Yahuwah, make straight in the desert a highway for our Elohim. And then a little further down, it talks about um, Zion, O Zion, that bringeth good tidings. Get thee up into the high mountain, O Jerusalem, that bringeth good tidings. Yeah. 
So, yeah, I just thought that paralleled a bit. And then it also talked about he carries, uh, his, he, he shall feed his flock like a shepherd. And you were talking about that. That might have been in an, another verse that you read uh, that went down. He shall gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom and shall gently lead those that are with young. So that seems to be an end time verse too, yeah. as well as well as the time when Yeshua was here, you know, with John the Baptist. Um, so, yeah. All connected to Jubilees as well, too. If you see in, uh, in Isaiah when he comes inside uh, the, the the temple to read from Isaiah, um, he pauses at a per particular place in that uh, chapter because he's fulfilling a certain point, and, he, and he's fulfilling the second point when he returns, which is connected to the Jubilee, the year. Yeah, the uh, day of vengeance. Yeah. The day of vengeance. It's a great and terrible day. Yeah, that that's cool that Scott spotted um, that it was a it wasn't really in the plain text the the day of Yahuwah. That's yeah. an abacus and right there in his name. In mm -hmm. his, uh, in, in, it's, it's incredible. Anybody else got anything they want to share? Hey, uh, before my laptop went on the fritz, I had something else I wanted to share. If that's okay. Yeah. That's a really awesome table, brother. By the way code searcher doing what he does best <laughs> but um you know you know you guys have seen me stencil out codes and and just in in the hebraic words something i really enjoy doing because you know we stress so much that that this this program these programs that we use they don't they don't make the codes they just they're just a quick fast tool to to pull them together what would take years to do in, in a matter of a minute it's, that's all it's doing. It's the language itself that's encoded. It, it's not the program that's doing it. People need to understand this. And, it, and so when I was looking up this word for this kuf wav mem, arise, this word for resurrection that's attached to it, I noticed that in the words, uh, now the word, if you put a mem in front of this word kum, it also means place. So you have some uh ambiguity there you know um are you screaming so, right now no not yet okay um so so if you put the word makum which means place a share ibikar ibikar yod bet chet resh which means the place in which i have chosen you'll have the word mashiach encoded so i i thought well what if what if i just took the word hashem can you guys see that yes you have the word hashem asher ibechar the name which he has chosen you have hamashiach at a two letter skip right in there. And then at the end, I just put this word, the salvation of you. I, I don't, Yesh, the word Yeshua is embedded in it. It's the base word, but I, I can't pronounce this. It's with a Lamed and a, and a, uh, a Tau and a calf at the end. Uh, Le Yeshua took, <laughs> that's a hard one to, to pronounce. It's Le talk. Yes, I just kind of put that at the end there to let it flow, right. you know, just to kind of fill it out. There's nothing encoded here, and I didn't have enough room. I don't have my small stencil anymore. I gave it away. I was using my big stencil on this, so I couldn't fit it. And, but it, to me, there's no coincidence that in the three words, the name which he has chosen is Hamashiach at a two-letter skip. It's the same thing that we're, you know, in Chris's code with in the third day, you have the word shalub encoded. It's, that's not a coincidence. Right. So um, I, I enjoy doing this because I'm just trying to demonstrate that it's the language that's, that's encoded and his, and he encoded his word. Uh, I, I don't know that these three words uh, 
appear consecutively in the in the scripture. I don't. Th I'm not sure that it does. I don't think it does. Um, it was the same thing uh, on this one here. Um, I did not too long ago. Um, you have the word priest, Yahuwah Elohim, the priests of Yahuwah Elohim, and encoded there is the word kingdom. And he told us where to find the kingdom, and if and Revelation says that we're pre, we're kings and priests. Amen. You know that's to me this isn't here by accident, and you know people ask, well, why is this code stuff so important? Well, there's because something there for, for, for the reason is because people would like to say that this book is fairy tales and legends. That's been pretty used. <laughs> it's fairy tales and legends and the many facets of his scripture in, in his revelation is like a diamond and it's unique and it cannot be made. You know, man can't make it. He can't do that. Um, as hard as he may try to fabricate, like Brendan McKay did with some codes from Moby Dick. Uh, it's a thumbprint, man. It's, it's like, you know, in his creation, when he's created, if you look at it on the, on the micro level, sometimes like a snowflake or, you know, any, anything in creation, it, you could see it, a divine hand, your DNA screams a divine hand that's not an accident there, there's just too much right. intelligent structure to just pass off as as an accident exactly and when you see these three word combinations that come together with encoded words at, at a two three four letter skip i'm sorry that's not there by accident it, it can't be no it, it's it can't not. be it's not and you're meant to find it we're told in proverbs that it is you know for his glory that he hides things and it's for your honor that you can search those things out. I mean, you, he'll honor you in, in those things. We're clearly told in the scriptures that he is an Elohim that hides and he wants you to find him. So, so thanks for letting me share that. Thank, thank you, guys. Do you know how harsh it is, brother, that, that he hides things? That Where it says he hides things? Say that again. Do you know what verse it is in Proverbs where he says he hides things? Uh, I think it's 25. Say again? It's 25. Yeah. All right. Thank you, brother. Mm -hmm. But there's other places, too. There's a, uh, you know, you can find, if you just, find, you just do like a word search of, of he hides or just hides and, and look at all the things that, that, you know, draw reference to that. Like he hides his face. Uh, from them there, and, and, this, and goes on and on and on and, and you'll see a pattern in that there's many times he's he's hidden he's hidden inside the, the holy of holies he's you know con concealed inside the smoke or you know there's many references huh? read Deuteronomy 29 29 All right, thank you. I'm looking for it, Dollars. Want me to read Deuteronomy 29, 29. All right. The secret things belongs to Yahuwah our Elohim, but the things revealed belong to us and our children forever that we may follow all the words of his Torah. Do I need to say that again? The secret things belong to Yahuwah, our Elohim, but the things revealed belong to us our and our sons that we may observe all the words of his Torah. Amen. So he has hidden secret things for us to find that point us back to the, the secret of the Torah. That, that's the secret that we that we are to keep his his instructions. All right. 
we don't have anything else, guys. I'm going to close it here. Darla and I have got to go to the other side of the island and back in just a couple hours. Time. <laughs> um, and we got a uh, high holy day coming on, so there's a lot of preparation. Um, you guys be blessed. Enjoy yourself um, in your, uh, your fast and your time with the Father. Are we going to do any kind of... Um, are we committed to, to that group in the park? Uh, we don't have to. Well, I think we got kids that would like to be there, yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm going to wing it. Uh, I'm not quite sure if we're going to do some kind of live stream because there's a messianic group here that uh, we, we kind of run into. And we got invited to come to their uh, day in the park kind of thing. For Yom Kippur. For Yom Kippur. And there's a lot of kids and stuff, and my kids kind of want to, Play with other kids. So, yeah. You gonna be with uh, brother Jason? If he comes. Yeah, if Jason comes. That's awesome. Yeah. I know a tree trimmer out there too. His name's Brian Elnor or something or other. He's a he's a roots believer as well. I don't know. I know he's on the island out there somewhere. I'll have to uh, message him. There's been a couple that's reached out to me. Um, even one guy that he, he walked up to me he had Michael um, in Hebrew on his forearm, and he was like, "Hey." Uh, I was standing here and I saw him coming and he's like, Hey, code searcher. I was like, Hey, I didn't recognize him. He's like, Hey, I'm Michael. And he shows me his forearm. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's cool. He's got a Hebrew Michael on there. So was I was, a... was going to tell me he was the angel Michael or what? Cause that All right. happened before. But, um, was that a random, uh, encounter on the Island? Just random. We were down that's at Uncle Roberts cool. and, uh, he, he walked up to me, but, but there are some some Hebrews on the island. A few have reached out. Jason's told me of some, but we haven't organized or anything. Hey, Scott, I like what you said. He's a tree guy that believes in the roots. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't catch that. Very good, Ann. That's pretty witty. Uh, awesome. You should make that into a T-shirt, Scott. I'm a tree guy that believes in the roots. <laughs> right yeah get you a shirt man i'm a and, and that's a great opener for for conversation especially if you're working in that business you're like what does that shirt mean man well, let me tell you oh well you should see the conversation that get started when i wear my yeshua t-shirts and my my torah t-shirts that's what i'm talking about those are yeah. those are openers you know, i'll buy yeah. one of your shirts yeah. come on Where's the entrepreneur in you? Oh, man. It's like, hey, when I put my my Torah shirts on, it's like going to war. Right. Wow. Torah, Torah, war. Yeah. I was just going to ask you guys, um, our daughter was in a car accident that was the other guy's fault. And um, so the car insurance people have sent her money because her car was totaled. So we're going to buy a vehicle that we... We set out to buy like a week ago as soon as the check had cleared. And we just would like to ask you guys for prayer because obviously that takes some wisdom to buy a used car. And we'd appreciate your prayers on that. Yeah. it's uh, We haven't yeah. seen it yet. Um, it's for my daughter. Um, we don't want to buy a lemon. You know what I'm saying? I, uh, yeah. I've had to work on cars before, but it's it's a nuisance when you have to do it constantly. Uh, working on something so she's going to take her insurance money and go in and basically get the same kind of vehicle. It's just a newer model. And um, hopefully it's not a limit, please. <laughs> All right, guys, we love you. Um, catch up with us on hip chat. We'll, we'll, um, I'm going to play it by ear as far as a live stream. Cause I'm not quite sure what we're going to be doing with uh, this messianic group, but I'll try to do a live stream. We love you all. Um, we wish you a blessed, Yom Kippur, and uh, we'll see you in the next meeting. Abba, we're so thankful for these students, Father, and what you're doing in their lives and transforming them into to these vessels of uh, prophecy and uh, uh, the gifts of the Spirit and these tools you are enabling us to look at your sealed books, Father. We just thank you for those gifts you've given us the opportunity father to search the hidden things of you um, we just love you father we love you that you've sent yeshua 
to redeem us, Father. And we give you all the glory for, for that, Father. We praise your name. We exalt your name. And I'm a, here we are with these students. And I ask that you go with them, that you keep them protected, Father, as your word says, and bring them back to the next class. We ask this in Yeshua's name. Amen. We love you guys. Love you too, brother. Amen. Amen. We'll keep you posted. Shalom, everybody. Shalom. 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 Shalom.